Hello and welcome to the Crystal PM records module and template training. We will be going over this module right here, the records, and there is a lot to it. So let's go ahead and jump in. To get to the records, we are going to click the button and search for a test patient. One thing that I would like to point out that will save you some time is if your patient has a really long last name and it's kind of complicated, you can actually just type in the first couple letters of their last name, do a double space, and then start typing in their first name and then the system will match that. And we are brought into the records. When you enter the records, your system should look like this. You should have the Crystal PM template loaded. Now, I don't have all of the tabs in mine. I've got it focused on the core tabs because everything else is actually optional. I wanted to keep it focused. If you do not have the Crystal PM template loaded, go back to your records training outline and download the template into your system. For your exams, you'll have either new patients or existing patients. New patients, that's pretty self-explanatory. You're starting them completely from scratch. Existing patients, you may have had paper charts in your office. So you may need to scan those in. You may be from a data transfer. There are a couple different scenarios as far as existing patients go. Regardless if they are new or existing, online forms are going to be your friend. They are going to increase efficiency in your office, not only in the records, but for whoever is delegated to entering the patient information and the insurance information. Let me bring up a sample of the online forms. This is also in our help website. And under online services, you have patient forms. So patients are going to either at home or in your office, you can have a tablet. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It literally just has to have access to the internet. So they're gonna go online and they're gonna fill out their patient information, their insurance, and their medical history. They will submit their forms to your office and whoever that is delegated to is going to see that they are in kind of a holding basket until the patient actually comes in, at which point in time those online forms can be imported. They will start a new patient if they are from scratch and if it's an existing patient, it will allow your staff to verify the information that has changed and they can import the patient information. There are online forms, tutorials, and videos if you would like to get into that before you have your forms activated. For an example, I have all of the fields that are included in the online forms highlighted in blue. So it's your reason for visit, the primary and if it applies secondary chief complaints, PCP information, social history, their medical history, including medications, allergies, review of ocular systems, patient and family history, review of systems, and also a handful of contact lens questions if that applies to them. So you can see it's quite a bit of information and how this would save you time in the long run. Let's go through the scenario of a brand new patient who did not fill out the online forms. The first thing we want to do is create the medical record. I did make an appointment for my test patient today, so it's going to assign Dr. Stone to the medical record because Dr. Stone is who is associated on the appointment. So the system will use that logic. Of course, if that is not correct, maybe something changed last minute, you can assign a different doctor here. From here, you can basically start filling out the records. You can use a combination of the quick buttons. You can type into the fields that don't have any chief complaint. They're just here for an annual exam, okay? Uh, you do want to select the smoking status every time, regardless of if they're a new patient or existing patient. Always select that from the drop down. There's a little reminder here every visit. And then just go through and put in any findings here. Oops. We can leave everything else blank. OK, 
okay. They don't really have any ocular history or surgeries or anything like that. But their grandparent did have glaucoma and their sibling has hypertension. They really don't have a whole lot of review of systems to fill out other than some seasonal allergies. And they do take a multivitamin. All right, so that's going to get you a good start for filling out your new patient. Okay, next we're going to go through filling out an existing patient with no online forms. Just like a new patient, we'll create the medical record. But now since we have some previous information to work with, we can actually go ahead and import that to help to fill some things out. So when we click previous master, we actually get a list of all of the exams that we have in Crystal. And what I can do is I can see that this is a dry eye evaluation. This is going to be from their appointment type that was assigned. And you can also see that uh, this was by, this is the doctor's initials who filled it out. And we can see that the DED tab, which is a dry eye tab, was filled out. So we really won't want to do that. We want it to come from a, a comprehensive exam and we can see the tabs that were filled out here. OK, so let's go ahead and import the previous information from the state of service. And there we go. It is working on it. Let's go ahead and select their language. And so we've got pretty much that filled out. Um, again, we do want to select the smoking status every time. OK, that's great. And now that we've got that, we can go ahead and if they're coming in for a different reason uh, and they have a different chief complaint, we can obviously cater that to this visit. OK. So we'll see everything that was filled out. Let's continue with the scenario of an existing patient and you want to view their history. There are a couple different ways to do that. So I will go over all of them. The first way would be if you want to see their exam exactly as you filled it out last time. What you're going to do is come down to old records and you'll be able to see a list of their prior exams. Okay, we know this one is dry eye, so let's go ahead and go to their last comprehensive exam. And what the system will do is it's only going to display the fields that you filled out. That's also why it's, you know, it's okay that um, you have more tabs than you need because when you're reviewing their old data, it only has what you actually filled out. So again, we can see exactly as we filled it out on that date of service. So you can go through these tabs. You'll notice it is pretty small. I apologize, but you'll see the date of service down here, 51722. If you wanted to toggle between the last visit down here and today's visit up here, so you can toggle back and forth as needed. Today's up here. Prior visit is down here. The second way to view their history is if you're just looking for the history of the times that you filled out the exam tab, you can right click on it and you'll be able to see those dates of service. Now, it doesn't really tell you the type of service or the type of appointment, but it does let you know the different dates. So maybe we want to see what the exam tab looked on that date. So it is going to jump us directly to that tab. Okay, and we can obviously see the other dates of service there as well, but it's just a quick way to be able to jump around. Right clicking on the tabs and displaying the date of service here, it's basically the same on these little buttons. It's just a different way to access it, but it's the same exact functionality. Okay, just jumps you right to that, to that date of service. If you want to see their history, but not necessarily how you filled it out, but you want to see everything in more of a snapshot, that's where this history tab comes into play. You can load all of the grids and it's going to show you all of the dates of service and then what you had filled out for that grid. So reason for visit chief complaint history here. Um, best corrected visual acuities. We've got their diagnosis and plan off to the side. So there's a number of different grids that you can check out a snapshot of their history here. 
There is also something that you can enable called the auto history. That is going to be in page options and auto history. What happens when you've got this enabled is when you click into a field, it's going to display exactly what you had filled in on that particular field and the dates of service. If you would like to use this to import previous information, you can do that field by field. Let's say you wanna have the same value enter in, you can double click it. Now, as far as viewing the prior prescriptions, I get this question a lot. There's this little RX button up here that's for their prescription history. So this will allow you to view their spectacle and contact prescriptions as well as their frame and contact orders. Most of these buttons up here are for history as well, so you can play around with those as you start to get some data into your system. Now that we have the different types of patients and a few different scenarios, as well as viewing prior history, we can go through the rest of the tabs. I'm not going to go over every single field in each tab, but I will go over the unique key points for each tab. On the Chief Complaint tab, like I said before, you do need to make sure that you select the smoking status every time. That's going to trigger some behind the scenes things that are going to go through to the ARRA tab for government reporting. So regardless of if you're using it or not, it's always just a good idea to select that each time. On the medical history tab, we do have the medication and allergy grids. These are going to carry forward as you start to see the patient automatically. So you don't have to press previous button on these ones. They are just automatically going to display it. Uh, we do know that the medications and the allergies and everything like that are going to come through from the patient forms. So what the patient fills out is not going to come into here. So that will be up to you or your staff to fill out these grids. So once you have the patient reported medication, you can add medication. This will bring up the medication add window, which is connected to the drug RX norm library set up by the government. I do get asked sometimes if you can add in your own medications or customize the list and the answer is no because it is a government list that they control basically. So what will happen is to search for medication you can basically just start typing in and you'll see that the system will intuitively try to guess uh, or display which medications you may be searching for. So if we choose one which is that's just at random. Sometimes it'll have all four boxes listed and other times it'll be just one. So whatever best pertains to your patient, you can go ahead and click that or double click it. And we'll see that it is now in their medication list with the default status as active. If you would like to, you can further define that medication in this yellow section. So you can put in their dose and frequency, start date, all of that, but it is not actually required. What is required if you are going to be participating in the government reporting like MIPS, MACRA, uh, those types of entities is you do want to fill out to the form. The form is right here. So that is required. That's the only thing that they require. I'm not sure why it's focused on just that, but that's what they want to see. So just go ahead and choose that, save the medication, and that'll be a part of their active medications. Adding the allergies is very similar in the fact that it connects to the Rx Norm library. You can start searching for what the patient is reporting. Choose the one that best applies. Now this one isn't immediately going to go into their allergy list. Uh, you do need to choose if the status is active, what their reaction is, the severity, and then you can go ahead and save the drug allergy here. Okay, and then at that point in time, it will be on their 
allergy list. Another thing to point out about these grids is that this is where all scripts comes into play. Let me jump over to our help website and I'm in the good to know area. There's a guide that goes over the configuration and use of all scripts. If you're thinking about signing up for all scripts, you can do this at any point in time. This goes over everything. So first, one of the doctors in your office will sign up for the basic version. Once the main doctor is signed up and you've got a master account, that doctor will log in and then within the settings tab is where they can add additional providers and or prescribe on behalf of users. I would suggest getting your all scripts username and passwords set up and ready to go just in case all scripts asks you for additional credentialing information. It's just good to have it ready to go. Once you've got that done and you are on your live version, that's where tech support can do the integration. They'll have you make sure that your username and your password is entered under admin employees, and then they will link your account together. You may have already paid for the enterprise version. If not, you'll be required to do that before tech support can integrate everything together. How this comes into the grids is you can press this CCR button, and I apologize, I don't have a play version to show you exactly how it looks, but essentially this is going to connect to all scripts and their database. As long as the patient has a allergy and medication history on file with them, you'll be able to check off the medications and allergies you want to import, and they will enter into these grids. So depending on how many medications and or allergies your patient has, it can save you a little bit of time. Moving on to the pretest tab, there's nothing super special to note about this. It's got your patient vitals as well as testing information. The tech tab is optional. If you have a tech and you would like them to have a special tab that just has everything on it they need to enter so it's focused, you can definitely keep it or delete it. If you decide to keep it, it doesn't matter where you enter the information into because these fields are redundant. Um, you can enter the information in here and it'll go to the refraction tab. Refraction will write back to tech. So they are linked together. The previous glass or previous contact uh, section goes to the contact tab and then the drops and the IOPs are going to go to the exam tab. The blue buttons that you see here are for machines. You can integrate an auto refractor, auto keratometer, lensometer. So there's a number of different machines that we can integrate with. Those you can find on our website, crystalpm.com. It gives you a list. If we are dealing with a patient that we've seen in Crystal before, or maybe from a data transfer, if they've got a previous prescription, you can import the previous prescription here. Like I said before, to view the previous history, you can click this RX button and it'll show you their prior glasses. Uh, unfortunately, you can't choose which prescription you want to import. Like if you wanted this one, you would just use that as a guide to key in the information. You can really only have it come from the most recent prescription. Um, this glasses correction two pertains to the, um, the second position. So if they had like a single vision and then they had a pair of sunglasses last time, that's what the second one is for, not necessarily like two times ago. So there's that. If they've got a previous correction, you can fill it out here, import it from a machine, you can key it in. Once you've got that filled out, you can send it down to the manifest refraction or if you're going to be doing an auto refraction, let's just go ahead and plug in some of those numbers here. There we are. If it's from an auto refraction or a manual refraction, it doesn't really matter. You can fill that out and we can send that down to the manifest refraction, which is actually on the refraction tab. Okay, and then maybe your tech needs to import the previous contact lens prescription. Same thing, they've got one on file, so we can easily import that from their last one. If the patient had filled out their online forms, these would be listed as well as long as they filled those out. So you can see kind of what their daily flow is for that. 
Okay. Tech can fill out their CL history. That's good. We've got some buttons, some quick buttons for drops. As you press these, it's gonna put in the time from your computer and it automatically marks it OU. The IOPs, we have a couple of different types and methods to choose from, and then you can just enter the IOP here. Okay, all right, so tech is done. Uh, then we can go to the refraction tab. So we've already got that pretty much filled out. So they filled out the previous, they put in an auto refraction. Um, they sent it, remember over there, they sent it to the manifest refraction. So we've already got that filled out. And then the manifest is automatically gonna transfer down to the, to the final. Okay, so regardless of if they send it over there or if you fill it out here, it's going to transfer right on down. We can make any prescription notes here and then we can finalize the prescription. This pop-up will just allow you to do a once over to make sure that the prescription is correct because this is what your opticians are going to see if the patient is going to order glasses. Okay, so that's what they're going to see. And of course, that is in another training, but this is just a, a segue into that. That's how you finalize it. There are three different glasses prescriptions on here that you can send to the final. So if they have another one, you can mark maybe this is a progressive lens. You can finalize that to the second position here. You can also rename these if you want to. Maybe this is their main pair of glasses and maybe this is like a sunglasses. So you can rename those if you want to, but it's not necessary. Sometimes it does help out your opticians though if you if you rename them for the patient. Uh, for this in, uh, intermediate ad, in order to use that, let's actually clear this. So you'll enter the intermediate ad here. There's a couple options to choose from, and then that will take these parameters here and send them over to Final Glasses too. Okay, so that's what that is. Moving on to the exam tab, we've already got this partially filled out from our tech. We can come in here and this tab is unique in the fact that it has auto coding enabled, which you can disable if you don't like it, but it is there if you, if you do. So when you press the F9 value, if there is an asterisk next to the value, that means that it is going to put in the corresponding diagnosis code for you. So if we choose Drusen here, it'll put in the code for us. I'll show you that in just a second. These buttons in the middle, they are dual purpose. They display the name of the category, but then they also are an equals button. So you can send it over from left to right. Okay, that's what that is. There is a way to add in more. I mean, there's a lot to choose from as far as the ones that are going to automatically put in a diagnosis code for you. But if you are interested in adding additional ones in, there is a guide that goes over that. Uh, it's probably one of the last things you wanted to do. Uh, just you want to have a, a good base on, on editing records before you start something like that. But there is a video and a PDF in the advanced editing section of our help website. Okay. All right, so we've got that filled out. At the very bottom here, there's just a little section for ARRA, which again is the government reporting. So just a few buttons to help you expedite filling out that or those fields. And next would be our interpretation tab. Couple things to note here. These buttons put in the test and the date for you. You've got an all else normal button here. You can also fill in just like we did before with the drop downs or by typing in. This tab is set up for Medicare compliancy. So where we've got the data required for reports, these are two fields that they are very, they're sticklers on. So make sure that you fill those out. So we've got photos, we have visual fields, gonioscopy and Ansler, special testing one, two, and three, and we've got the procedure section. I get asked a lot how we can import the images into Crystal. There's two ways to do that. The first way would be if your machine is capable of saving the image as an image file, 
you can import it into these little thumbnails here. So if we click on this, we can do upload. And then as long as the file is a JPEG, a GIF, a BMP, PNG, you can import that into this. I think that's me. Let's see. Yep. <laughs> so you can import the image here. Uh, you can blow it up a little bit if you want to. But, you know, as you can see, it's an image file. So the pixels are not, um, they're not as high res as it's going to be on your machine. Just keep that in mind. But it is going to give you a little bit of a thumbnail from your instrument. What I would suggest you do is if you don't already have a shared folder set up in your office, you may want to have your IT person set that up. And then that way, you can have your machine save the image to the shared folder and then you can access the shared folder from whatever computer you're at in the office. That way you don't need to worry about being connected to it to get these pictures in here. If you are not able to have your machine save as one of these image types, um, PDF is on there but it actually will not work. Um, then what you can do is you can use a tool called the Crystal PDF Printer that's something the machine integration specialist can go over with you. There is also on our help website, if you'd like more information on that, if you want to check out the PDF printer, that is on uh, printing patient records. And I've got a quick little video that goes over the PDF printer. So you can check that out too if you wanted a little bit more information. Now in the AMP tab, We've already got some things coded in here. So um, I guess I put in a final prescription where this poor patient had myopia, astigmatism, and presbyopia. So that is based upon the final prescription, okay? So your spectacle RX. The other codes that were entered were entered in are because of the codes that we put onto the exam. So that would be the auto coding. Now we've got the plan to fill out. What we can do is we can, of course, type it in. We can choose from the F9s. We've got these quick buttons. If it's something that they just need to monitor, you can use those. For something like Drusen, I've got a button over here where we can press Drusen. And we've already got the code in, so we don't need to select it. But by pressing the button, it's going to put in the plan, education, and instructions. So that's a quick way to fill those out as well. You can, of course, modify what it fills out. Again, that's in the advanced editing session of our help website. All right, so we've got that filled out. We can put in a return visit if needed. Maybe we just need to see the patient back in oop, one year. Okay, we've got a um, the ocular photography filled out from the button that we pressed in the interp tab. We can fill out any office visit codes here as well. Maybe we've got a refraction. Uh, let's say that we haven't done the contact lens tab yet, but maybe we need to do a refit normal. Uh, actually, let's do a fit. Okay, there we go. So the point is we've got our coding done. Whatever codes you enter into the AMP tab, they are going to go to what's called the routing slip or R slip. Go ahead and pop this open once you've got your coding done. This will allow you to associate your procedure codes with the corresponding diagnosis code. Okay, you can click them off, you can choose the letters at the top, however you need to do it. And then these codes, your selections here, and then any notes that you may need to make to billing are going to stay on this routing slip. And this routing slip is going to electronically follow the patient around. So you've, you're done with them in records, then next if they go to optical, your optical codes, glasses, lenses, wipes, whatever, are going to be added to the same routing slip. And then when the patient is ready to leave the office, your biller is going to come into billing and they will import everything. They'll see that there is a routing slip available. Do you wanna turn it into an invoice? Typically, they're going to click yes, and then all of those codes are going to come in and they can do their their biller thing. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't get too much into that. And of course, that is in another training. But again, this is to segue into that. But just so you're aware, it does start in the records with the assessment and plan tab.
if we're done with our record and we're ready to finalize everything because you know we've got some we've got some blank spaces here going on uh so I told you before, you don't have to fill everything out. And what you can do in the AMP tab once you are done is you can press this green button, summarize exam. And that is going to go through a couple automations where it presses the all else normal buttons. So it just kind of helps you to make sure that everything is finalized and wrapped up uh, in the medical history. It's going to mark things are completed. If it detects some entries into these, it's going to mark that your medication reconciliation is performed, everything like that, okay? Um, that I think was actually from a previous value, but, but yeah, it's gonna help to wrap everything up for you as well as summarize your interpretation tab. It's gonna take all of these and it's going to actually condense them so that way it pulls into the history tab let me show you that really quick just so you know what i'm talking about that's at the very bottom so we can see that it wraps everything up into a field here so that way it'll pull into the interpretation history nicely so you'll be able to see at a glance your interpretation history versus like going down to old records and trying to look through all the dates of service. You'll be able to view them all here next time. Okay, the other thing it does is it condenses the review of systems. So that way it'll pull into the letters or word templates nice for your reports, as well as condenses the medication and the allergy summaries. So what it does is it looks to the grids and the fields and it condenses them. Uh, same thing for the medic for the allergies, looks to both of them and it condenses, okay? So that is the purpose behind that. So go ahead and press that once you're all done. The next thing that you can do is you can press the record complete checkbox here. This is optional, you do not need to do that, but uh, it is kind of nice, especially when you first start, to be able to run the report at the end of the day, just to see if there's any records that you need to go back and visit. So once again, that is on our help uh, website here under good to know. There is a quick PDF that is going to go over the records completed checkbox. Okay, so you can take a look at that. There is a difference between completing the exam and closing the exams. Completing the exam is done by the user. You're reviewing the routing slip to make sure everything is good. You're pressing the summarize exam and optionally you're pressing the records completed checkbox. Okay, so those are all just um, checks and balances for you. Closing the exam is actually done by the system. That is going to be done at midnight every night. So the next day, if you come in and you need to edit an exam, you'll see that you can't just go in and start typing. You actually are going to have to edit the exam because the system closes it. And by default, you have three days. But if you are interested in extending that, I have a, a quick PDF that I can send you on how to extend that, or we can do it during the question and answer call, which is your next appointment. Moving right along to the CL tab, we've already got our previous contact lens correction in. And if that is gonna be the exact same for the patient and you're gonna do another trial on it, you can copy it down to trial one or you can copy it down to the final, which is at the very bottom. If we're going to be getting a different trial, you can search the CL catalog. I've got APB loaded, so we can choose our type if it's for one or both eyes. And then we can start by choosing the manufacturer. That's going to filter the series for us. Any options that only have one option, uh, it's gonna automatically fill that in for you. You can choose the ones that um, have more than one option and it'll fill out everything else for you that it can, okay? Once you've got all your parameters selected, just double click this right here and all of your parameters are inserted. You can go through and do your VAs, your over refractions, put in any notes, 
and then you can go ahead and trial this out. Just like the glasses, it's going to pop up a little window for you to check over and make sure that everything is set for your opticians. If you are actually going to order this as a final versus a trial, we can clear those out and we can copy it down to final. Or if you want to start in the final section, you've still got that search CL button here and then we can finalize it right from here. The major difference between the two is that if you finalize it from the trial section, it's going to put trial right up here in the notes and the final is not going to. The reason for that is because when we look at the history, if it's a trial, it's going to list trial in the notes. So that way you can tell the difference between if it was a trial or if doesn't have anything like that in the notes, it's implied that it is a, a final contact lens. So that's one way to do it. You can also just kind of like how we did the glasses labels, they show up as the type. So you could actually come into your prescriptions here and you could say this is a, a trial. Oops. So that is another way to designate that it is actually a trial versus a final. Okay, but you do need to make sure that you press one of these buttons in order to send it to this little window so that way your opticians can create the order for you. I have for my search CL catalog, I've got ABB selected. You can change that and choose which one you want. That's done in admin. And oh, I've got this. Uh, it The system detected that there's a final contact lens prescription. So it's just asking me if I want to upload it to the portal. That's for the, uh, the law where you have to either print out and have the patient sign and then scan it in or easier, you can upload it to their portal. So that's what that is. Um, I'm just going to choose no for now. OK, and then admin, we have integrations. And this is where you can choose a catalog that you want. We don't charge for any of them, but in order to do CLX, you do actually have, an, have to have an account, which you can enter. There's a little tiny, tiny plus button right up here. You can enter your account information, your client ID and office, and then you can update the catalog. All the other ones, you just update the catalog and it'll start to download it and then you're good to go. All right, so there's that. It is important to note that you need to keep your catalogs up to date manually. Uh, we do not update them for you. And so you'll wanna come back to this section periodically just to see if there is an update available. Um, usually like every couple months, I would say, or if you notice that you're trying to order a new contact and it's not in the list, then go and see if there's an update available. And there's a friendly reminder right up here on how to do that, just because it is, you know, it's kind of a lot when you're first starting out. So I made a little reminder for you right there. Uh, that is pretty much it for the contact lens. Um, if you are going to be ordering contact lenses, <clears throat> excuse me, through Crystal into one of our vendors, I do have a quick video that goes over it on our help website. Again, in the good to know section, it goes over integration and ordering, choosing the vendor, uh, creating the RX and records. So we've basically done all of that. Um, and then ordering and batching. So that's the last part of it. So you can go ahead and skip ahead if you want to watch the ordering and batching. Uh, otherwise, they should go over that in your optical training as well. OK, yeah, but that's pretty much it for contacts. Moving right along, we're almost done, guys, uh, to the Drug RX tab. If you are on the enterprise version of all scripts, you do not need to fill this out. You will click ePrescribe. That will launch the all scripts interface. You'll do everything from choosing your script and sending it through to your preferred pharmacy, all in all scripts, and then it's going to write back into Crystal. If you're not e-prescribing, you can definitely fill this out and then you can just go ahead and print it. There are two Drug RX tabs available. This one is pretty straightforward. It's got drop downs that you can change just like your other drop downs. Um, choose your SIG. Your DEA number is automatically going to fill in for you. 
The other version is not as straightforward, but I do want to point it out because if you're doing any government reported, you need to use this alternate version. So in admin company and then records, we're going to use the new drug RX input. And this is what that one looks like. So you're actually searching using the RX norm. Okay. So it is a little bit more convoluted, I think, but it is kind of nice in the fact that you can actually connect everything. So if you've got a medication, you can actually sign a signature and you can assign all of this in one swoop for sort of like your normal values. If you are going to be using this, there is a, of course, there's a tutorial that goes over that on here. It helps to explain a little bit of that. We can also go over that if you do have any questions, but it's there just in case you need it. Okay. Prescription tab is just the prescriptions that you did. It's just another way to access it, but you do also have these little short buttons up here. Okay. And the summary tab, we didn't really talk about this, but it is kind of similar to the pretest or to the tech tab in the fact that it's going to have all of the information that you've entered from your other tabs. It's bi-directional. Some offices prefer this tab just because it is a little bit more straightforward than the big single tabs. You can start at the top and you can scroll all the way down to the bottom. So I would consider this like an easier version or you can use it just to take a look when you're done with the exam, just to make sure that you've got everything. And then we also did talk about the history tab. That's going to give you a snapshot of your history. And the DT tab is for data transfers, which as I said before, that is going to be in a separate short video. And last but not least, we have the ARRA tab. I will not be going over this tab. I just did want to point out that it will be in the template. Even if you do not do government reporting, it's part of our certification. So it'll just chill at the end, whether you use it or not. If you are going to be utilizing it for reporting on the records training outline towards the bottom, I've got information on how to access some documentation as well as who to contact. That concludes the records module training. So the next step, if we scroll up a little bit, is the post video Q&A call. I'll have you share your screen. We'll go through any questions that you have regarding the template and its functionality. So I will talk to you then. Thank you so much for watching.